so often you're looking at your social media and you're wondering why it's not working or what is happening or how can I really get an idea of what's going on within my page, my Instagram page, my Facebook page, my likes, my comments, my followers, and you're struggling to figure out how to take it from where it is to where it's going. So with that in mind, what I want to do today is give you something that you can do, a simple exercise that you can go back to time and again to evaluate what you've got and look at how to make a change according to that so you can increase your engagement and you can increase the awareness around you. Does that sound like something that'd be helpful? If it is, hopefully it will be. Pay a little bit of attention today and if needed, we can get you some of um, these scorecards and everything. So on that note, let me pull this up and get to, oops, I closed the wrong one. Here we go. All right. So today I'm going to give you guys a social media scorecard. This is what we're going to get into. Now, a couple of things that we're going to cover today. First thing I want, we're going to go over is establishing the cadence, establishing the KPIs, then your quality metrics, and then analyzing your results. Okay. So as I dive into this, some of you are brand new to the program or newer, and you haven't necessarily taken part in some of the other trainings that I've done when it dives around actual marketing. Now, this is above and beyond what you're given inside the partner program. This is just additional stuff. Just trying to help you guys become better business people overall. If you don't want to apply this, awesome. Great. We've got other stuff you can use. If you feel like this is useful, that's fantastic. If I talk about Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, understand these are all additional things that you can do versus just the basics. Because I know a lot of you are looking to do more, right? So, yes, I'm going to share these slides. Here's the caveat. I'm going to share it with the people that are inside the Affirmations Challenge. So, if you're not there, you'll need to get in there to click the link that I'm going to be posting in there. Okay? So, if you're wondering where the Affirmations Challenge is and you're saying, how can I get in there? In case you're not, there's the link for the Skype group. And I will be sending that email out again later on. All right. Now, let's dive into what we have here. So these four steps is what we're going to cover. Sounds like As it, but, Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Free, right? And, and such difficult tasks I'm asking you guys to, to fulfill. Click a link, join a group, better yourself. Dear Lord, what's he going to ask for next? So here's what you've got to start with, guys. You've got to build out your awareness of who you are and what's going on, right? Right now, not enough people know who you are. If you want to generate more revenue, that's what you've got to do. Now, the buy portion of this funnel, this no like and trust funnel, the buy portion is handled mostly by the funnel that Blake's got and, and you guys have set up within the partner program. But this initial part of who you are, why should people care about you and why you are an expert, at least why you are a step or two ahead of where they are, why are they going to know, like, and trust? This is the process that you're taking people through. This is why you post on your social media. This is why you post on your Facebook, be it your personal page, your business page, your Instagram account, on LinkedIn. This is what you're taking people through this process, taking them from a stranger to someone that's known into becoming a friend and then a raving fan. This is the role of marketing and copywriting. It's to move prospects step-by-step step through a process in each stage of the value journey. It helps them come to an emotional and logical decision that what you have is of higher value than what they have to give up to attain it. A real easy example is the training that is included in that affirmations challenge and then the slides that I'm going to give you to help you build your business. Is it worth more to you than having to click on that link and participate with a bunch of other grown adults that are trying to better themselves as well. Oh my gosh. Right. So um, I'm getting a question. I see the need for Facebook, but I find it intellectually unstimulating and other and rather superficial. So if we're talking about the content that you're putting in there, then change up the content and go a little bit more in depth. But you've got to kind of look at it too like this. The content that you're putting out there, you're connecting with your audience. So it depends on where your audience is, who they are. At the same time, 
when you market, the most effective marketing is written for what have we talked about? It's really like that 10 to 14, 15 year old level, right? That level of, we need to, we're not talking down to people in, in that regards. What we're doing is we're trying to grab their attention and, and you don't often grab their attention with graduate level interaction. That's not the level of excitement, at least on a, could, because we're looking at a much broader spectrum of individuals. Even if I'm going after doctors and attorneys, right, which, which are typically higher level of education in any part of the world, they're the ones that put more time into standard education. Marketing-wise, I'm still going after them the same way I would someone else. And maybe further into the content, maybe other aspects have a, a deeper meaning. You know, I get a, a bit more verbose in what I'm saying and how I'm guiding them through that journey to build up a, another layer of credibility, that may be part of it. But look, one of, the, one of the most famous doctors in the world right now is a lady that gets on social media and pops pimples and, and talks about how gross it is. But you know what it's done? It's helped her raise awareness around not just regular pimples, but all these other things that are going on and the health involved with it and getting an audience and helping her generate revenue. Right. I mean, there's all sorts of different ways that we can look at it, but we're talking about it from a marketing perspective. How do we bring, bring people in and gather their attention? So it has very little to do with what we think is is awesome stuff and what they pay attention to. And that's part of the KPIs, the metrics that we're going to be looking at. Right. Because it's all about what the audience wants here. All right. Now, all things be, being equal, people will buy from who they know, like and trust. Right. All things not being equal, people will buy from who they know, like, and trust. We want to develop that out. They're going to do this through that value journey that we're taking them through. So first thing that we do for our social media scorecard, okay, now we're diving in and you can take some notes, but I'll give you these slides um, inside the affirmations group. So step number one is we got to establish our cadence. Now, what am I talking about here? This is deciding how much of each type of content that you're going to post or you want to post each week. Okay, I'll tell you right now, if you post once a week, it's simply not enough, unless we're talking one video a week on YouTube. One post a week isn't enough. Three posts a week, probably not going to be enough. Now, where do I get these posts? Look, we've got a ton of them that you can start out with inside the partner program. There's over 200 something posts that are in there if you make some modifications to them because they've got to speak to your audience and they have to speak from you. So if you've established a social media calendar, add up your individual items to generate the values. If you don't have one, then it's time to make one. Now, here's what we got. So what type of and how often? So we've got photos, videos, quotes, captions, Facebook and Instagram stories. Those are the types of posts that we're going to use on a regular basis. Okay, photos, videos, quotes, captions, Facebook, Instagram stories. Now, along with that, you can use infographics. Right. And those are, I mean, some of the things that I post in here on the slides are infographics. It's things like this was, you know, my guy did up, this is from the no like and trust funnel that I did before. Right. So we're, we're taking, these are elements of what would be, right. These are kind of infographics or graphics that are put together to grab attention. Right. Now you can build these out on Canva. There's other things that you can do. Yeah, Tom's saying you don't need to figure out your whole life purpose. You got to figure out your next bold move. Um, yeah, so that's how you continue to grow. What we're wanting to do with our content marketing is what is the purpose that our customer is looking for? And ultimately getting more leads, generating more revenue is the solution that we're stepping in to help them solve because generating more revenue means they can keep people on, they can hire more people, they can pay their bills, they can do all of these things. They haven't figured out how to do that yet. Most of them don't have a website that converts well at all. One of the things I do with business coaching, one of the first things I do is say, let's do a, a, in a website evaluation. And you go, one of the first questions that I ask every single business is, how much business do you think you've generated from your website? And you'd be surprised how many of them have a number that's well below a thousand. Well, I, or I don't know. Well, it's there, you know, and we get people there, but that's not really how we, we get our deals. We get them from blah, blah, blah. A lot of them have something set up 
and and going that has nothing to do like they just I've got a social media I've got a Facebook I've got a website it's a presence but there's no conversion going on so you're stepping in to solve that problem but you've got to understand how to do that for you and that's what I'm trying to impart to you how your social media will create the interaction and engagement to walk them through this no like trust and buy funnel that we're building out right this process so um Next, so photos, videos, quotes, captions, infographics, Facebook, Instagram stories, there's all sorts of different things. So what's a calendar? A calendar is simply, you know, having something mapped out that says, you know, Monday through Friday or the first through the 30th, this is kind of what I plan on doing. So you've got some kind of scope. Now, there are things that you can go out and you can grab a social media calendar. If I put together a calendar, how many of you guys would you think you might get some benefit from it? Anybody? I've got four hands going up. Okay. Well, you, oh, a couple more. All right. All right. There we go. So, all right. I'm going to put together a calendar. It's going to take me a couple of days, but I'm going to give you kind of baselines of of some elements, some ideas. It it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to follow it exactly. Change things up. But I'm just trying to give you something that you can use and then you create it, modify it so that it is yours. Make sense? So I will put that together. I will have it for you guys this next week. And I'll give you one guess where I'm going to put it first. Um, for everybody that's that wants it. All right, next, we have to establish our KPIs. KPIs are key performance indicators. Get a little business school on you. Okay, so we need to establish those. For example, if I set a goal for myself to get 250 comments per week in May, and I'm consistently hitting that goal, then in June, I'm going to look to increase the goal by 5 to 10%, right? I'm going to establish KPIs. I'm going to establish goals to increase that. That makes sense. Now, here's some basic KPIs for social media. Comments, likes, video views, profile views. You can include with video views, we can look at post videos that are inside of a post views. You can also look at your Instagram and Facebook story views and then new followers. Okay. These are basics on KPIs. You can establish a couple of others. Inside of Instagram, inside of Facebook, they provide a lot of this. They show you what's there, especially on your business page. They'll tell you how many new followers that week. They'll tell you how many comments, how much interaction, how many people your post reached during the week because you were, you know, your post was maybe shared here and there, right? So these are basic KPIs. All right, so KPI again, key performance indicator. These are things that I can measure to help me see how well my post is interacting, right? Next, we're going to establish our quality metrics. The reason behind quality metrics, it helps you understand how your posts are performing overall. Here's what I would do. If you because a lot of you are starting out without a lot of history yet on your posts. We're starting from scratch. Some of you are going, oh, I don't know what to do because I don't have anything yet. That's fine. Nobody does at the beginning. Everybody starts at zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into some groups. How many of you guys in your strategy session have heard me say you should join some groups? Or I've said you should follow some influencers in your niche. Sound familiar? I may have said it once or, or maybe several dozen times every day. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into those groups and I'm going to look at the types of content that's getting the most engagement. Man, it seems like whenever this admin asks a question, they're flooded with comments, likes and shares. It seems like whenever this person posts a video, it gets more than when they just post a picture. It seems when this person is posting this or posting that. Yeah, Jeannie's asking how to find the KPIs. I'll do that this next week on Facebook and Instagram so you can kind of find them. You've got to have a page to, in order to look, but you can find it. Um, but does, does that make sense how I go find what types of posts are working? Now, over time, I start to look at the same stuff with me. I start to look at my posts. But if you don't have that at the beginning, if I need to establish a KPI and then establish some 
baseline quality metrics to begin, that's what I'm going to do. Now, here's a quick idea, okay? A quick way I can look at this. If someone has 100,000 followers, can someone answer for me why if someone has 100,000 followers, a lot of times they'll get maybe 5,000 likes on something versus 50,000 or 100? Now, once in a while, they have something that goes viral. But if we look at consistently over time, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 likes, when they got 100,000 followers, why does that happen? Because they're providing value. Well, yeah, so they get some because they're providing value, but why isn't that number a lot higher? Oh, why is it not higher? being active okay. enough? Oh, why isn't it higher? Okay. So what else? What would be another reason? Not relevant. Here's what I'm trying to get you guys to see is that let's say you have a thousand followers and you get 50 likes, right? Let's put it back down into our realm. A thousand followers, we get 50 likes, the same kind of metrics, right? A lot of the reason you're not getting more, you want to be a little bit more active. You want to do a little bit more relevant. Yeah, silent might be part of it. People that see it that aren't engaging. Some of it may simply be Facebook's algorithm. It's not getting in front of as many people as you think. Okay. That's why at some point, and I'm not saying start with this because there's a little bit involved here, but at some point, some of you are probably going to want to create your own group because I can control, I can keep things in front of people. If I've got a group, I can pin some posts. I can reshare a post, right? I can get people back engaged in that way, right? But a regular page is only going to have somewhere between two to 10% um, engagement because that's all the exposure that it's getting oftentimes unless it kind of gets reshared a few times. It starts to go a little viral because more and more people are commenting, posting, and liking than Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, whatever is going to say, hey, let's maybe keep this in front of people, right? Does that make sense with you guys? So that means I've got to do more to get in front of more people. I've got to, know, I've got to play with the times to see what, what's going to work, Right. Assume no one sees your post, so you post more. Well, and this is part of how we how we get into that. Okay, this is so we're going to score it this scorecard here. So your our quality metrics. So it helps you understand. You look at the highest performing from others, so you get an idea, and then look at which of your posts are getting engagement, and set the goals accordingly to improve. So if I've got posts that are doing more, then I'm going to set a goal to do more of those posts. Man, it seems like questions, surveys, quizzes. Short videos seem to be getting great stuff. I'm going to do more of that. Next, let's recap real quick. So we have the number of posts. So how often and what we're posting. Number of each post type that you're publishing each week. We have the key performance indicators. So this is the data that we decide on, right? We decide on the KPI, followers, likes, comments, views, profile views, all that kind of stuff. Next, the post quality analytics. So I'm, it's the data. So we're looking at how well the content's being received. This week, I received overall 50 comments. Look, you're starting out. 50 comments is awesome. 50 comments overall during the week. That, that means I get people that are starting to engage. This is great. So next week, I want to you know, have 55 comments. So maybe I'm going to post. You know, I had two posts this week that got 15 and, and 18 comments each, and the other one's only averaged five. So I'm going to post more like those posts that got 15 and 18, right? And I'm going to try and I'm going to test out and see if that same time this next week gets me the results that last week got me. I'm looking at times, right? So all of this stuff. So that's your recap. Now, this is where we start to analyze it, right? We're going to look at wins and losses for each section. Each section needs to be analyzed individually. And then we want to win for each section, meaning... I'm going to give you a scorecard that's going to look a little like this. I've got to make some modifications to this, so I'm not going to get you these slides today, but I'm going to get you these scorecards. Okay. And you'll be able to go through, did this many posts get over this many likes, right? So I'm, I'm going to have this set up. Does this look like something everybody can kind of pretty straightforward, right? I can use this click, click, boom, boom. 
All right. So what you want to do is we, we look at the, the three things. We have number of posts, right? So our frequency, our KPIs, and our quality. Frequency, KPIs, quality. Got it? Frequency, KPIs, quality. So if I have a win-win loss, that means frequency was a win, KPI was a win, but my quality, my engagement was down. Make sense? Win-win loss. Frequency, KPI, quality. So I'm hitting the KPIs, but I can improve the quality. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'm, I'm going to switch the KPI a bit to challenge myself, increase the quality and effectiveness of each post. So I'm going to make sure that what I put out is a little bit higher quality because the engagement's a little off. So I'm going to play with that some. I'm going to figure out what I can do that's going to engage, increase my engagement. I'm not giving you... So right here, guys, please understand... I'm not giving, is there a way to search for highest engagement posts in history? Um, I, you could probably Google some of that and you'd see it, but I'm not sure, Jeff. Um, Renee, that's fantastic. Good for you. That is a big win. I'm not giving you with this the strategies on, on what and how to do. I'm helping you have something that you can use as a scorecard. So you can objectively look at it and go, it's working, it's not working. And, and not just go, well, it didn't, nothing's working right now, but it's working. Why isn't it working? And then if I can look at those KPIs and go, it didn't work because of this, I can make adjustments to that, right? Instead of just throwing darts at a wall and hoping sooner or later I hit a board, but I'm blindfolded. That's one of the tool that we're trying to go over right now. Okay. So win, win, loss. Next. <laughs> Win loss win means frequency is okay, KPIs are down, but I'm getting the engagement. So I'm posting quality content, it's resonating with the audience, but I'm not hitting the KPIs. So what I probably need to do is post more. I'm not big on lowering my KPIs because I'm hitting them and and well, just you know, my I, I'm not posting enough, and that's why I'm not getting this, right? So if you're posting and your engagement is there, the frequency there and the engagement is there, then I'm looking at the other things with my KPIs. Got it? Okay. Win, loss, loss. You're hitting the number of posts, but the quality and performance is lacking. Look in your highest performing post to analyze what's working with the audience and improve the post. Go back to what influencers are doing and figure out what's going on there. Yeah. Single mom, CEO, business owner. I am so... Hello? Ooh. Mute. All. Oh. I don't know who was going on. Single mom, CEO owner, rocking and rolling, whoever that was. Good job. Okay. Um, that's this stage that I was just showing you, the win-loss loss. That's where a lot of people are sitting right now. Over and over on the strategy session, I talk about three key skills that you need to learn. Number one is research. Number two is marketing content. Number three is time management. You see how well those three fit exactly with these three main categories? Research. Marketing content, time management. Time management is how often and number of times I post. Research allows me to figure out the quality metrics. KPI, right, as far as like the engagement, that's my marketing content. So a lot of people are, are struggling be, and it's the loss loss because we're posting, we're just reposting our ad all the time. Here's my logo. What do you guys think? Get leads on social media. And we're not building an audience. You, you've got to go at it and go, how do I build a relationship with an audience? How do I bring people to me and say, this is what I want from you. This is what I got for you. Let's be friends. I want to be your friend here, right? Let's use social media for what it actually is. But from a business perspective, yeah, you're just creating noise and noise that no one's even paying attention to. If all you're doing is posting that ad, no one's going to look at it. And so what I need to do is get better at my headline or get better at my content I can use the templates that are inside the partner program. I've got, all, you know, you've got your change this sentence to say this, here you go, right? And since I've done my research and I understand my audience or I'm inside of groups and I understand my audience, I know what I need to post or at least I've got a baseline idea. Is this resonating or are we picking this up? You picking up what I'm putting down? Everybody here? So you research, marketing content, time management. Those are your three big skills, okay? And it's going to help you. Um, so 
the April, the KPIs are KPIs are simply the key performance indicator. So I'm not giving you strategies to increase them at the moment, but the KPIs are um, right here. It's just comments, likes, video views, profile views, new followers. If that's down, then it's probably because of quality content or it's not getting in front of people. So I need to raise the quality of my content, right? So that comes from understand, uh, uh, establishing those metrics. So I need to look and find the type of posts that are generating engagement from other sources. If mine aren't getting it at all, then I need to look at influencers. I need to be inside of groups. I need to look at brands inside my niche and see what's getting engagement from them. And I need to rip them off. I need to do what they're doing. Mimic what's working. Okay. So that's the win loss loss. And we're going to improve our post qualities. Well, how do I do that? Well, I learned to write better marketing copy. Where do I learn that? Well, it's inside the trainings. We've got stuff. There's additional stuff in Accelerator too, but all right. So win, win, win. Everything's going great. Good. Challenge yourself. Adjust it up. Do more. Okay. Loss, loss, loss. Look, happens to all of us because we're doing this scorecard weekly or monthly at a minimum, right? We're checking our stuff. Honestly, this wouldn't take too long, especially when you have Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn doing all of this for you. This is how many, you know, on LinkedIn, how many of you guys have it set up with LinkedIn where you got the uh, the premium membership and, and you get the email said, this many people are looking at you. This many people read your article. It, like they give you your KPIs, guys. They know the KPIs. Use those. Okay. So if things are, are off, you don't have to just throw out the baby with the bathwater, as it were. I mean, try it again. At a minimum, put an emphasis on hitting your goal for number of posts. Okay. Loss, loss, win. You're posting quality content. You're just not doing enough. A lot of you fall into this category. Make sure you hit your goal for the number of posts. So again, we've got all these different measurements. Win, win, loss, win, loss, win, 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 blah, 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 right? All of these things are here. I'm going to give you these scorecards. You're going to assess your social media. You're going to establish your KPIs, pretty basic stuff. You don't have to get all fancy with it. Right? You don't have to get the basics. Say, this is what I need to pay attention to. Look at others that are doing it well. Do what they're doing. Has everyone at a minimum established three groups and three influencers in their niche? Three groups and three influencers in their niche. If you haven't done that, you haven't started your research. Start there. Go find them and then take a few minutes and scroll through. And I promise you will see some of their posts that are doing better than others. Go with that. See what they're doing. Watch their stories and figure out what's going on. Now, when you get up into top tier celebrity status and all they're doing is like, you know, look at how pretty I am or look at how buff I am, or look at my car, like, okay, let's get past that. Let's bring it down a notch to where, you know, something that's a little bit more viable. And that really only applies to a handful of niches anyway. But um, Hartley, I would, it wouldn't be someone you know, unless they're active on digital media, because we're trying to replicate something that's working on digital media for us. Okay, so I'm looking at Certain, certain niches are going to have brands that do well on social media and some brands that just don't get it. Have you seen that? Some brands just suck at social media, right? If I was going after restaurants, there are some restaurants out there that kill at social media. They do because the content is, is great. The, what the captions they're writing are great. Their photos are beautiful or, or they've got kind of the, a cooking, a slight short cooking video, presenting the food, right? There's no reason you guys can't do that. Borrow some of those, share some of their stuff, tag them in it. And if you're not sure how to borrow someone else's post or repost or, you know, use their video and share and tag it, find it on YouTube. I mean, I can do the training guys, but there's probably right now a hundred thousand videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. So I know everyone likes looking at me and hearing me say it, but do it. It's there. 
right? Some of those simple videos are there, guys. The training's there. Use that stuff. Use what's working. Okay, use that first. So KPIs, social media scorecard, all this makes sense. We got an idea. You guys are going to go out and, and do a little evaluation of your own social media, hopefully. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and get this one more time. If you haven't yet, decide on your 30-day or your 30-day. Decide on your three social media influencers. Decide on your three groups. Pick some brands, whatever. Go out, find them, and emulate them. Okay? Start there. That's part of what you'll be doing as far as your posts are. Okay, next, look at your social media. I'm going to give these uh, slides. They're going to be inside the affirmations group, the 30-day affirmation challenge. If you are not there yet, then please join. Okay, click there. I'll have the slides available to you a little bit later on today. I'm going to post them there.